ride, man. Let's go for a ride. For the law enforcement officer, the question of attitudes, his and those he will deal with, is of tremendous importance. Let us view this incident from two vantage points. No, man, I mean, we need a station wagon, man. Make us look big, man. Right. We don't need no Red, Cadillac. Right. 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 We don't see no... You don't see no Cadillac. Check it out. Man, I don't believe it. Oh, yeah. From this point of view, it looks like this. A group of young men having a little innocent fun on a street corner. I know they're coming over here. The law enforcement officer approaching the group, the nightstick, the uniform, creates a hostile, menacing image. Unnecessary physical contact further escalates the sense of hostility. Where's your permit? Also, it's in my other pants, man. Where's your other pants at? In my closet. You don't look like you have any. Get out of the car. Get your hand off the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Off the car. This arbitrary and threatening attitude is seen as further proof of hostility. Get up! Get up. What do you got to do with it? No more. I'm with you. Get up! 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 Get that this interpretation may result in the situation getting out of hand. Before you retire, there was some all cars. Now let's turn it around and look at the same incident from the point of view of the law enforcement officer. From this vantage point, the hostility, anger, and negative attitudes of the group perceived by the law enforcement officer influence his behavior. Get off the car! I told you to call the car. Oh, I don't care whose car it is. Get off the car. Well, oh, yeah. Get off the car. Get off the car. The dynamics of the situation are indeed a question of attitudes. And here he is, Officer Friendly. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Not much. What do you plan on doing here? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Car. Michael. Yeah, I see your uh, registration for the car. It's, uh, it's in my other pants, you know. It don't look like you have another pair of pants. You got it. 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 You got Attitudes are tied in with feelings, beliefs, opinions. People have feelings, beliefs, opinions, or views about all sorts of things. The way people feel about things determines, to a great extent, what they do about them. It is common knowledge that uh, everyone develops attitudes, and the important thing to bear in mind is that behavior is influenced by them. Attitudes are definitely an important factor in police performance. Your attitudes and those of the people you contact. There is a point which you as a police officer should always keep in mind. It is a very important point and one which has far-reaching significance for your success in dealing with people. The point is this. The way a person reacts to you depends to a considerable extent on what he thinks your attitude is. Notice that I did not say his reaction depends upon your attitude. What I said was it depends on what he believes your attitude is. The same is true of your reaction to persons you contact. What you say and do and what the other person sees may be quite different. But what you do is based upon your concept of reality. You cannot actually see an attitude. All that you can do is make inferences from the behavior that a person holds a certain attitude. Now, the inferences you make about the attitudes of a person with whom you have contact 
help to determine the way you react to him. On the other side, John Q. Citizen's reading of your attitude helps to determine his reaction to you. If it appears to you that you are facing a man who detests police or who regards you with contempt, your reaction to him will be quite different naturally than it would be if he seems to be reasonable and respectful. For his part, the citizen reacts to you also according to his judgments of your attitudes toward him. In this respect, there is nothing essentially different about police and citizen contacts. Attitudes play a similar role between people in all walks of life. The first situation we will examine is that of a simple one-to-one -one relationship between officer and citizen. His very first contact with this citizen is overly aggressive and threatening. Let me see your permit, mister. His approach serves to intimidate and anger the motorist. You from out of town? Yes, sir. Where are you living now? New York. Pardon? New York. New York? Yes, sir. About all you New Yorkers drive the same way. They don't make those lights back there any better than what you just come through. I'm very sorry about that. It is possible now to analyze the same incident and note the key differences that can bring about a far more productive result. The officer is professional in his approach and yet keeps personal attitudes outside of his contact with the motorist. He places his motorcycle behind the car and acts to reduce the anxiety already present in the situation. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, officer. Can I do something more? Yes, sir. We have a red light back here at the corner. By removing his sunglasses and unbuckling his helmet, he further reduces tension. His tone of voice is firm, but not overly hostile or threatening. I see you're from New York. Yes, I am, officer. It's quite heavy traffic up there, sir. I know, but I try not to drive too much in New York either. Well, we have, are you a tourist or are you just uh, down I'm here working for the government? No, I'm a tourist officer. I see. How long are you going to be in Washington? Oh, about four or five more days, I believe. Well, the difference in the two approaches can readily be seen, and the attitude of the citizen toward the police is strongly affected by which method the officer chooses to adopt. In Washington, a little more pleasant but you're going to have to be much more aware in traffic because passing a red light is one of the major causes of fatality accidents in this city. I see you, officer. All right, sir. I'll be right back. Take your fuck for crying out. Leave me alone. I don't have your dollar. If I took your dollar, you think you'd be walking around? Our second situation involves a brawl taking place in front of a bar. Again, the police officer can act either to escalate or reduce the violence already present in the situation. All right, knock it out. All right, knock it out. Knock it out. What's going on? All right, let me in this instance, a hasty and violent approach fails to reduce the levels of anger and hostility. Now let's consider another approach. Oh, no, it's a dollar. It was 50 cents when I was in here five minutes ago. Get your, your hands off of there. Don't hit my hand when I'm... Just that. Don't, just do, give it don't do it. In this instance, the police officers act to reduce the conflict and separate the participants, offering a reasonable and effective alternative. What do you mean, what's the problem? He makes seven dollars an hour, he's bitching about seven. He used to be a friend of mine. How long you been knowing? No, about seven years. Why? Seven years? Calm down, yeah. calm down. That son of a gun called me a liar from all my friends inside there. Yeah, but y'all had arguments before, haven't you? Hold I'm sitting there. I go into John, I come out, there's a buck missing. Hold it down, hold beer. it down. Not Who got your dollar? This guy over I here. I know he got your dollar. You I see? was sitting there. I put the dollar. had some right, change in front of my beer. Check your pocket. I checked my pocket. Check them again. I ain't How got much you been there. drinking tonight? I only had a couple of beers. How this many? guy's in a couple of beers. Right. I go to John. I come back. This you guy's going out the door. Huh? 
I don't want to press no charges when you get the dollar. No, we're not going to lock you up. We think that you're still going to be friends. All you need to do is talk to each other. Yeah. If you talk to each other, I'm sure you'll sell the whole thing amongst yourself. There won't be no problem at all, OK? OK. You ready to go over and talk to him? You gonna be friends now? Not argue? Come on now, shake hands. All right. Well, you know what we're using. I, I, I didn't take it. I swear I didn't take it. You know, I didn't take it. The end result of this second approach reduces the incidence of violence, avoids adding another case to the already crowded court dockets, and tends to create a more positive attitude on the part of the public toward the law enforcement officer. In our third situation, the police have received a call from a local high school that a small group of students are blocking the entrance to the school and creating a disturbance in front of it. The school authorities have asked the police to remove the students from the front of the school. The approach of two of the officers, the way they walk, where they hold their hands, the expression on their faces, telegraphs their basic attitudes. Okay, okay, let's break it up. Break it up. Let's get out of here. I don't care what your problem is. Let's get your ass somewhere. Without waiting for an explanation, the police officers give orders in a hostile tone. This simply magnifies an already difficult situation. By venting their own hostility on the students, the situation not only gets out of hand quickly, but results in unnecessary violence to student and police alike. The end result is not only that the police officers engage in violent flare-ups with the students, but the general relationship between police and community has been damaged. Now let's watch the same situation handled quite differently. The officers approach in a relaxed, non-threatening manner. What seems to be the problem, hey, we're not bothering y'all, so why should y'all come bothering us? Dick? I tell you, you're all standing here, and you're blocking the entrance of the school, so that others cannot come in. Now, what seems to be the problem? Why don't everybody sit down and listen for a minute? Their tone of voice is authoritative, professional, but reasonable. In situations involving large groups of people where there is present a great deal of built-in hostility, it lies within the ability of the police officer to reduce that hostility or magnify it. Everything he says or does affects the outcome. Go to the class, teacher, put you out the room and tell you to get a pass. Get the pass and tell you to go out the room anyway. Do a report on such and such. Well, so I tell you what, this is not the way to take care of the problem. You don't stand out here because it's illegal to stand out here and block the entrance of a school. This is illegal. Oh, man, oh, man. Oh, 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 not we the government. No, you the government. Okay, right now, so you the government. Yeah. But you got to be organized in such a way that when you go up there to talk to them, they'll listen to you. They don't listen they don't to you. They don't listen to you. It's hard, man. Man, 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 man. You know what I mean. That's what I'm talking about. Every time you try to do something to help yourself, somebody got to come in and mess it up. No, but they're they not interested in what you're doing out here. It's our problem once you come out here, the police problem. You know, that's all right. Why don't you come back here tomorrow morning? Right here, right here. And let someone come here. I'm not leaving. 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 Are you going well, to talk to the uh, principal? How are you accomplishing anything well, by just standing out here? Oh, man, I ain't, ain't got no business up to you. You leave the school, you get locked up. You stay to school, you get locked up. What are you Come saying? On, let's get up. What? Let him try to put me off the sidewalk. In each of these situations, we have clearly seen how the attitudes and approaches of the police officer have had a decisive and vital effect on the end result. In practical terms, 
the management of attitudes by police officers can be summed up in a few points. One, an officer's private attitudes should not be permitted to influence his official decisions. He must strive for a high degree of objectivity in his work. In short, he should not make judgments on the basis of his own ideas of right and wrong or his likes and dislikes. Two, an officer should not become personally involved when making an arrest. He must not look upon a violation as a personal affront. It is a wrong against the state, the people, and not against him personally. Three, nobody and nothing in the rules require an officer to like the people he deals with. Similarly, and more important, nobody and nothing in the rules says he must dislike them. However, bear in mind that if people either see or believe that you dislike them, your contact will always be more difficult and less effective. Remember the old proverb, it is easier to catch flies with sugar than with vinegar. Four, do not permit people to goad you into showing anger. There is another old saying, he who angers you conquers you. Five, try to show an attitude of neutrality and objectivity. Let people see that there is nothing personal in what you are doing when your contact is of an adversary type. You are acting officially and according to the rules. An attitude of sympathy and human concern would, of course, be appropriate in a contact in which you are rendering a helpful service. By showing that there is nothing personal in your actions in an adversary contact, you will focus the hostility of the people on the system and not on you personally. This will also help you avoid charges of brutality, rudeness, or lack of courtesy.